relatives uh, my Cinnaboy name is uh, Little Eagle and I come from Fort Peck, Montana, I reside in Fraser. Uh, I'm a red bottom Cinnaboy out of the, one of the 33 bands. Uh, I've been in education now for going on 15 years instructing the NAS classes in Fraser High School uh, K-12. We've recently um, implemented our method into uh, K-8, uh, K-6 mainly. Uh, so basically what we're doing is working on different approaches and you know to kind of get you up to where we need to be or catch you up to speed. I work with the University of Montana for a little while, the Native Children's Trauma Center. And before I stepped away from the trauma center, I was taking a look at all the Western approaches for trauma in our children. And um, nothing seemed to work. They had zero impact. Um, while in, I mean, it, it was minimal. Let's just put it that way. Very, very, very minimal. But the dollars that were coming in, and, and I think it's like that in every program, you know, not too sure, but a lot of our programs have zero, zero success in whether it's Western education, whether it's Western therapeutic approaches, it just has minimal, minimal impact on our people. And um, so what I did was I started looking at, you know, what we needed at home, what we needed, what did our kids need, what do we need at home. And um, who better to develop and create than us, for us, by us, no matter who you are, Cree, Crow, Cinema, it don't matter. And, and um, we have the means and we have the makings to do that as tribes all over, but we tend to wait for other people to develop for us. That's even our language, you know, our curriculums to our dictionaries to everything. Um, if you don't have that degree or that stamp of that, that systematic education, then they really don't take you seriously. So what I did was start tracking and logging our own data on behavior, on a um, and on competency of, of run, running mainly more qualitative data um, rather than quantitative data. Quantitative data is more numbers and stuff, and you can really manipulate those things. So what we do is we do more of a qualitative run where we film, uh, do a pre-post type of test with our clientele, our, our students. Um, for example, we might give, you know, we have around 400 hand signs logged in, Plains Native American hand signs. And under that auspice alone, there's, um, there's a lot of variables um, in it. And it's called a total physical response. It's one of the better methods to instruct with early childhood development to kindergarten on up, preschool, head starts, and, and the method is sound very very sound um being able to prove that on the other hand you know in the westerners eyes is something different you know where they want you to learn the abcs and one two threes um i believe in my heart that our children learn by what their mothers and fathers or grandmother whoever it is it's bringing them up um give them whether it's english or cree or cinnabon or whatever and to maybe enhance their method um um, they, they might could learn a little bit of hand signs. Um, it's very, very effective, very, very effective. Um, and again, there's a lot of methodologies out there, and I encourage anybody who's running a place-based or up here I believe it's called land-based uh, methodologies, <coughs> excuse me, is one of the better ways to instruct. And it's the experiential component of education that creates a memory. And if we're neurologically thinking about, um, very competent about things, the only thing that retains a memory is an experience. Uh, repetitious tests on paper doesn't seem to do so well. As, uh, for example, you know, you want to learn how to jump out of an airplane, and you read about it, and you take the test about it. Now, I take you out to go jump out of the airplane. Um, what happens? 
that experience is going to stay with you forever because you're feeling all these different emotions. It's, it's triggering a memory. It's doing something different that you never really, really ever done. Your body is sensing that the unconscious part, you know, is triggering that subconscious part, maybe your feelings and, you know, finally gets up to the brain where it says, okay, dude, I, I see what this is. I know, you know, I feel it. I remember it and it stores it for you. So how do we get our, our culture and language back and, and there's a sense of urgency for us back home. My dad was the chief of the Cinnaboyne and he passed over a couple years back and so those are some pretty big shoes for me and my brother to fill. He teaches and instructs at the university level and I'm down with the with the students and, and, and the young ones and family and community and the same goes for him. Uh, we run a eight week program. We started about six seven years ago um, and just working through methodologies and strategies you know uh, trying things that didn't work trying you know and just kind of failing our way to that success where we need to be um, there's living a lot of people trying a lot of different things you know different orthographies we tried um, and, and everybody's different everybody is different so there is no one way that's going to save the language there is no one thing that's going to save the language we have the language archived, we have stories archived, we have, um, you know, great dictionaries, we have a lot of resources that have already been made and built, and the need um, out there for any more materials, maybe, I don't know if, it, if that's an urgency right now, but for us back home, we have 4,000 enrolled Assiniboines in Fort Peck, a total of around 10,000 enrolled tribal members. <coughs> Out of them 4,000, we might have 10 speakers, fluent, left. That's There's a need and a sense of urgency to start doing things differently and maybe bringing the world indigenous language standards that are issued around the world and in our universities and, and bringing that down to start in, with children and babies, um, even in daycares. Uh, we work a lot. Um, about three years ago, we've, we we brought a lady in by the name of Ku Kalau, and she said, "Stay the road, boys, and, and keep doing what you're doing." And she's our foremost leading uh, woman who has that that degree, that doctorate degree out of Hawaii. You know, she's built 21 different schools. Um, she's did it all. She's did 12 ran 12 years of immersion of immersion for schools in Hawaii, and. Um, she just blows it out of the water every time. She's called around the world, you know what I mean? And so we brought her in and, and, and we started talking about different things like um, how, how to, I guess, um, maybe approach this without making all the mistakes that, that, that maybe she went through, you know what I mean? And, and um, so she kind of gave us that guidance that, that we needed and she was always telling us to look for sustainability in anything that we do. So it's like, you know, we're trying to figure that that portion out. It's tough. Whether you guys get alley grants or we get the A and A grants, you know, when the grant ends, usually the project ends. You know what I mean? How do you find that sustainability in your community? How do you rouse the troops? How do you get people motivated to want to learn your language? Um, so then I kind of took it one step further and I started this project. So kind of get us to where we need to be right now. It's called the Init Project. E N I T. Plains Native Americans, youth, and kids down there are all talking about like. It, isn't it is the word so if they want you to agree with them they'll say in it mr white or you know next she you know i was i seen you at the game and last night in it you know instead of saying huh or you know they want you to agree with them and that's kind of the, the word all over indian country so we took that as an acronym yeah, and and it stands for empowering native indigenous tribes and underneath that is the idea and the concept and, and what i built is called cognitive experiential immersion and that's what I run in everything across the board. That idea, that that the, that thing that's common within it, it all, whether it's education or trauma or your community or your tribe, it, it does not matter. You can implement it into pretty much anything you want to do and build it your way. 
the offer, the concept can be built your way. It doesn't have to be built like this or do it like they, they say in a program. It's a program guideline that you can build uh, for your community and your tribe, your school or whatever, and you build that up from the ground up by yourself on your own for your people. Um, the, 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 because the time for us in waiting is we can't wait. There's a sense of urgency. We can't wait any longer. So that's kind of where we're at with it. But, you know, to make a long story short, we've come a long way. Um, we do try to, you know, we do quite a bit in sharing, um, I guess, not only the concept, but the, the, a couple of different approaches. I mean, if you're talking about education alone, education is big. It's huge. Don't get me wrong. Do not get me wrong. But we have not yet evolved to that, that, that Western hierarchy and peaked out with our culture. We have tribal colleges, sure. We have tribal junior colleges, sure. We have a couple different things, but we are not competitive. We are not the dominant society here. And, 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 and I believe that has to start with your people. It has to start at home. It has to start, you know, identifying truly with who you are. And, and I try to stay fact-based, evidence-based. I'm not pulling any punches here. So if we're talking about somatics, that's another thing you folks can look up is the, the study of sound. And do do the study. Do actually go and do it. Go find an elder, get some singers, maybe say a prayer into it. But it's, it's a science experiment. You can do it with kids. You can do it with the teachers, trainees. But do the experiment and find out for yourself. And we worked with NASA on that about eight years ago. And, and they were intrigued that the designs and the things that came out that, that, that were emitted by somatics was infinite coming out of our mouth. Not with a machine, not with a, uh, you know, the resonating, coming out of us with the song and the prayer and the language was creating these infinite designs within this liquid, infinite designs. And, and uh, they could not believe it. Now, if that's inside of us, this, this infinite design, of going forever outward or going forever inward. That means we are infinite beings. We, are, we have infinite knowledge and infinite potential. But are we waking that up? Are we actually utilizing it? Are we putting evidence-based, fact-based evidence alongside of who we are, what we are, and how we do it to gap the bridge, so to speak, to the 21st century for the future and the sake of our people? We are not. And I believe that's one of the things we really, really need to do as First Nations people all over is if we want them to take us seriously, for example, the doctors out there get paid hundreds and thousands of dollars, hundreds and thousands of dollars, creating, helping, fixing people, whatever, even at the hospital. What about our medicine men? What about our elders? What about the knowledge that they have? They have no degrees. They have not, nothing on there. What do we pay them? How, how do you, how, I can't comprehend it because what they have is priceless. They have is, you can't put a number on it. So in, in going forth, I think with our efforts, um, education is good, don't get me wrong. But until we start really building it ourselves, our own science books, our own history, local history, whatever, uh, place-based, land-based stuff is is kind of kind of gonna keep spinning our wheels and that that west western indo-european way of thinking and thought is ruling us and, uh, and, and, and to step out of that with in, or to integrate that science or whatever in our way and, and, and do it our way i think is going to empower us better hence the in it empowering native indigenous tribes so that's kind of where this all came from and basically travel around give it to whoever talk about it um, and again staying with evidence-based projects, you know, with the data, the research I've backed up. I got a, a nonprofit right now. Um, it's called Express to Speak. A good friend of mine um, heads that up. Him and a couple of attorneys uh, out of Missoula, and they're running the concept with at-risk youth that are locked up. That are, I mean, and it, they're blowing it out of the water. And they got a research team, Washington State, or well, I forget what university is backing them up, but they're doing the research with them and um unbelievable stuff happening but you know we're, we're instead of giving a child the freedom to think make their own decisions um free thought self-help self-teaching self, -help, self -teach, we give them a book and say read that and take the test 
there's a lot of information maybe that are, you know, it's not bad information, but there's a lot of information your brain really don't need either. And, um, you know, we need to start building our youth up the way we want to build them, build some leaders, some wicked awesome leaders in, in, in our communities. And we just haven't been able to do that, you know what I mean? And I think that's the key. The future to, is investing in them. Um, but are we actually doing that, you know, as First Nations people? So, you know, for, for me, this is a lot more than just a program. Or, uh, you know, like I said, my dad did, did quite a bit. He used to teach, and he was, like I said, the chief of the Red Bottom. Very knowledgeable, and uh, he's not here anymore, so those are pretty big shoes to fill. And even though I've been in education for quite a while, I'm nowhere near to where an elder is or where my father was or, you know, and um, I'm just trying to get some awareness out there and, you know, get people to share maybe in the methodology of TPR for um, hand science or what have you. It doesn't need to even be hand science. There's a lot of other methodologies out there that people can utilize for integrating their language or culture into the classroom. So many different ways. And when they say, well, how do you do it? How? how I mean, how are we going to get this done? How are we going to build a curriculum? How will we all get, okay, you're, you're, you're thinking Western again. How are we going to get this done, you know? Pre-post, video, everything, you know? And, and um, I don't know, it's just been an awesome journey for me. From experiential education, period. Indigenous education is experiential education to me. You're not going to be able to learn how to sing unless you go try it. You're not going to learn, um, you know, how to go tan a hide unless you go do it. Um, everything with the First Nations, I think, is all experiential first. Hopefully our own schools, you know, are uh, um, being able to empower and train up individuals to get after it, to get out there and, and make something happen on their own. Let me, let, let me put it this way. The Hawaiian people don't have, like, like a reservation like we got. They got to actually get out and work for it. They got to come together and, and, and make something happen, and they did. You're telling me 21 schools, all private money. This ain't a state school. These aren't state schools. These aren't, these are Hawaiian schools. Think about that. Hawaiian schools. The Hawaiian way. Hawaiian science and history and physics and whatever, math. Hawaiian. Now think about a First Nation school like that, or even your own home, town, wherever, that way. And what does that look like in your eye? What does that, how does that look? Where do we start? You know what I mean? Are we still gonna go ahead and keep doing things a Western way, or are we gonna start implementing it our way? You have to make a decision at some point. But again, where's the curriculum? Show me the syllabus, show me the test. You know, how do we assess that? <laughs> Uh, I'm looking for something different in education. I'm not looking for the same, same old thing, but I, because it ain't working at home for us. We've been implementing orthography tests. We ain't creating any speakers. So, and, and through the books, pre post run qualitative data based on clientele. So if you had a, you know, on our students, for example, um, we usually have around a 75, 85% success rate depending on what we're doing. But again, that's the, those are running, again, a pre-post weight test, the qualitative run, filming or whatever, audio. So we might quiz out on f for the first quarter, we want maybe 50 sight words. So we'll do the hand signs like yes, no, good, bad. Um, we'll give the hand signs, you know, and, we'll, and then after one, once in English, never again, huh? Here, watch that. See ya. At the end of that quarter, we'll test out again, depending on how many they get. And, and that's just one way for, for the um, for the hands on. It's culture. It's about everything. It's about a different way to think, maybe a different way to perceive, a um, different way to be. And of course, the language, of course, the culture. But everybody's different, so that's why I said this has to kind of be flexible. Um, the concept is sound, cognitive, experiential immersion. Uh, and getting it out there would be the um, getting people fired up to do something in their community. That's always the hard part. Motivation, trying to get motivated to, to get people to do anything. So it's getting out of bed sometimes is 
tough for me. You know, you got to get you, you got to pull yourself together and get up. And um, so I think that you know everybody's a little bit different, but at the end of the day, I can look back and be able to say, well, you know, I did my best at at, at getting a different perception out there to think differently. Um, it's a thing right now where there's a lot of Freudian, for example, there's a lot of Freudian um, therapeutic approaches that, that are still being practiced. Uh, but there's also one that's coming into play. It's probably been around for, I mean, it's been around for a while, but I mean, it's really, they're starting to really take it serious now. It's called positive psychology and it's self-help, self-talk, self, you know, thought. Um, that's one of the keys to changing. You know what I mean? For you have to start thinking differently if you want to become differently to receive differently. And we kind of might sound cheesy, but that's just the, the bottom line. If you want to become different or you want to change your life or you want to become more knowledgeable, you got to seek it out. And you can't just sit at home and do nothing. And the majority of us are sitting at home watching the TV or watching the games or whatever when you can be utilizing your time. So let's even talk about that. Let's talk about time. There is no time. There is no time in your day. When do you have time to, to learn the language if you have a job, nine to five? Then you come home and do chores with the family. When do you have time to start putting forth that effort? And immersively, they, they did the studies. It takes around six hours a day minimum to start picking up a language. Six hours a day. Where's your teachers that are going to teach six hours a day? And where's your students that are going to sit there for six hours and actually start picking this stuff up? And, and so time is certainly an issue. Public schools don't give us enough time in the classroom, not at all, to teach the language. And that's where we have minimal, minimal success in public settings. But there's so many variables, you know what I mean, when it comes to to education. You know, who holds the purse strings? Where does that, and when it comes down the ladder, that upper echelon, I guess, to the fiat system, where, you know, where do we fit in by the time the dollars hit us? You know, it's minimal and there's minimal time. Um, and, and that certainly plays a huge huge factor in all of Indian country everywhere. But, um, you know, there's, the only thing I can say about, I guess, the, the culture and the language is who, that, that's who we are. We, we have to try to at least identify where we come from. You know, and that's going to give us a sense of where we, we might can take it or where we can go at least. I'll learn all you can, whether it's the culture, language, knowledge is, is, is part of life and is the key to, to some great success out there for you. And I think that if everybody learned a little differently and seen the world a little differently, we'd be living in a different era and a different time. But, you know, we wouldn't be so dominated or, or held down. We've got to empower ourselves again, and especially our future, our children. Um, you know, with that, I just want to say thank you and um, good luck to all you that are in education and are in studying and are in school that are helping your tribe and in those positions to be effective. Um, good luck and keep helping your people.